the indicator would do would move no more than two degrees and then it would stick even after continuing to apply torque onto the torque wrench. So in taking this apart, I needed to understand how this operated and it's simple. It is operated purely by friction. This is nothing more than a rubber washer, which is clamped by this waffle washer onto the shaft, onto the dial indicator. Now, as a lot of other folks that I've looked up who use these, they said they simply lubricated this. Well, after some examination, I felt that lubricating that part would defeat the purpose since it seems like this has to have just enough friction to turn the dial indicator. So what I ended up doing was changing the shape of this washer. And because it is waffle, you can bend it. Now, the tendency would think, you would think, well, just add some bend to this since this is just a spring washer. Add some bend to it and that'll increase the friction. It can actually increase it so much that the dial does not turn. Instead, what I discovered was to literally take some of the bend out of the spring washer. And then I also took some degreaser and degrease the O-ring as well as the face of the dial, which was a little bit greasy just to give it the added friction that was needed and reassembled the parts. Yeah, I'm gonna go knock that down. So the dial indicator goes on. The spray washer goes on top of the dial or the compass. And as soon as I get it here, snap ring goes right back in place. So it's not a complicated device at all, but it's one that is completely necessary to do torque to yield settings. So there we have it. Now the operation is much smoother. So let's go over to the engine and see it in action. With the tool in place, you want to find an anchor point, a solid point that's simply going to hold the base or where the dial itself is. And just tighten that down. No need to crank it down incredibly. Otherwise, you'll probably break the housing on the, the tool. Once that's done, we turn the dial to the zero, which in this case is at the top, and it doesn't matter where the zero is, just get the dial onto the zero. And according to the instructions, I now have to turn this to 70 degrees, which is what I wish the temperature was outside. Uh, let's double check it, put it on zero again. Here we go. Now I'm using a breaker bar because I think it was Archimedes that said, give me a lever and I'll move the world. The longer the lever, the easier it is. I tried this with a half inch socket, I'm sorry, half inch ratchet. It did not go too well and I'm, I think I'm a pretty big guy. 70 degrees. Just pull the dial and I don't know if you can see that, but it's moving smoothly and stop at 70. Then that torque is done. 
Another recommendation for you. Because of all the nuts and bolts, fasteners and everything else, and interruptions that you may run into, you get yourself a marking pin similar to this. And when you have completed the torque, just a marker pin, when you have completed the torque on a particular fastener, mark it. That way, you'll have a record of what you have done. I won't be confused and won't run the chance of over torquing one because you think you may have missed it. So that's a little bit of a savings for you. Now, I say savings because I'm all about saving money here at the No Bucks Garage. Simple, many times works better than complicated. And it definitely costs a whole lot less. Insert tool. Maybe you'll have an easier time than I am right now. Fixed on a solid point, zeroed. Pull smoothly and gradually to your specified setting. And that's it. Just repeat for the specific number of fasteners that you have in your application. Don't forget to check the rotation of the assembly after each torquing of each rotating part. So there we have it. Rotates freely and smoothly. On to the next steps of assembly. Lubricate the camshaft and don't forget the distributor drive gear as well. <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to go for the lobes at this point, but you can. Just to make it easier. Just to be sure that you get all of the lobes prior to installation, but you especially want to get your journals Actually, the whole camshaft. You want the assembly lube on everything. Now, in theory, and in practice, you can actually do this in a day. But, If you're like me, you've got jobs and other responsibilities, other things that you have to go to and take care of, so you cannot devote an entire day to it. So, having assembly lube has the added benefit of not only providing lubrication and protection on startup, but also remains on the surfaces. Carefully insert the cam. Try not to nick. 
the journals as they go in. Now, just for the heck of it, because this cam so far, especially this rear journal, has passed through one, two, three of the bearings before it gets into its home on the fourth journal. I've got to squirt a little more assembly lube down on it. Just for insurance. It can't hurt it. There it is. Install cab shaft. One step closer.